Hey there, comic book fans. I'm back from the comic shop again this week with another pretty big week. Eight comics. Seven were on my pull list. One I pulled off the shelf. And I also got three comics off of eBay this week that just came today, so I'll show you them. But first, my two top of the printer museum comics this week. Whoops, I was flipped around. Leave it a chance. What number is that? Number 12. And Tales of Suspense. Uh, number 91, Gene Colan cover there. I don't know who inked them. I didn't look it up. The Gene Colan Iron Man cover and a Paul Smith Leave It to Jance cover. That's what I was looking at this week. And what's funny, I was, when I, I was thinking about, I think I got this when I was in college. So probably 1988. And this is from like 1969, I think it was. Or so. But it, and this is from like 1999. So it's like this comic right now is older than this comic was when I first got it. And this was a really old comic. 67, I think it's from, pardon me. And I probably got it in 87, 88. So that just blows my mind. But, you know, when, you're, when you get a comic when you're 21, a comic from when the year after you were born is really old. But now when you're 55, a comic from... 23 years ago just doesn't seem that old. I, I just found that funny that uh, how, how time passes and we perceive it. Let me show you the comics I got off of eBay, which are a DC series, Twilight. Three issue series, Howard Chaikin, Jose Garlio, Garcia Lopez, and Steve Olaf. I have no idea what this series is about, actually, from 1991, but I have a page of original art from it. I got this, I don't know, 10 years ago now. This is Jose Garcia Lopez with, turns out it's Howard Chaikin layouts. I didn't realize that. But I got this a decade ago, maybe. But I never had the comics. And I was just watching uh, Ralph Reese on Facebook published a link to an interview with Howard Chaikin done by some PBS station recently. And in the interview, Howard Chaikin mentioned these Twilight comics. And I was like, you know what? I really should track those down. This is usually in Mylar. I really should track those down because I have a page of original art from it. I should have the comic, too. So, there you go. I tracked those down. Tracked those... I should put this back in. Over here by its Mylar. And three issues of Twilight. And they cost me five bucks a piece. I think it was $15 shipped. For the whole three of my comic shop in Staten Island, so it didn't take long to get here. Then what else do we have? Arrow Smith Behind Enemy Lines, issue two is here. I think this is going to be either, uh, it's either going to be six issue series or two six issue series. I'm not sure. Carlos Pacheco in the artwork. A guy is on some secret mission behind enemy lines, and I think he got captured. I don't know if that was part of the plan or not. Nice Carlos Pacheco's artwork. Kurt Busiek uh, writing it. But I bought the original series, you know, when it came out, 2004 or something like that. So this follow-up series is uh, it's on my list. Then we got, what do we got here? Impossible Jones, issue three. And I think someone said this was originally a Kickstarter. So I don't know if each individual issue was Kickstarted or there was like a trade done of it Kickstarted and now they're putting it out as issues. I have no idea. But it's, I think it's just a mini, a fun, a fun series. I like the first two issues. Um, got this sort of, uh, I'm gonna call it cartoony style. Little Mike, little Mike Allred in there, and she she can stretch. Impossible Jones. She's like a plastic man, and she's a small time crook. Oh, there's some, there's a nice shot getting into trouble. Like I said, I like the first two issues. We'll see. I'll read it to the... I think, it's, I think it's only four issues or something like that, so we'll give that a read. What else do we have? Usagi Ujimbo, Lone Goat and Kid, number two. The first issue of this was really a done-in-one, so I'm not exactly sure when the Lone Goat and Kid story starts, and because I think that there wasn't a lot of continued... There's There certainly wasn't a lot of six-issue stories in Usagi, so I think they're just packaging them together. Oh, nice. Nice tiger banner there. So I think they're they're just packaging 
like Lone Goat and Kid, I don't know, may have only been like a, a one or two parter. So they're packaging them with other stuff I get. But uh, always good. You can pick up always any issue of Usagi and like it. And Saga is back. Issue number 56. 55 last month was back for the first time in, I don't know, three years. And it picked up right where it left off. Good stuff. I enjoy Saga. Uh, 54, three years ago, had a big turning point in it. So now it's uh, after the turning point, And they continue on with the Saga. I, I enjoy this one. With Brian K. Vaughn and Fiona Staples. Stan Sakai, of course, doing Usagi. Don't think I mentioned that, but I will. Then we've got, his name's right in the title, James Stokoe, Orphan and the Five Beasts. I, uh, issue four, this is another four, a five issue one, I think. Let's see, where am I? Hold on, my reading glasses are over here. There we go. Now I can, now I can glance. Sometimes they put how many issues it is in the Indicia. Not always. Nope, they don't in this one. But this one is really about the art. It's like a Hong Kong kung fu movie where she's got to track down these five beasts and put them all to rest because they're they're abusing her master's kung fu style. And it's really about the fun artwork. You know, the story itself isn't, you know, terrific. It's just you know, she's going around tracking these guys down. But the artwork is just, and the storytelling is just so fun. Very visual book. And then we've got Monstrous, number 37. Because she's scared in the dark. Been buying her for 37 issues. I like it. There's the monster inside of the Monstrous. I'll have to see what this issue brings. Big fantasy story, big war going on now between all the different factions of humans and animal people and, I don't know, elder thing, elder races and magicians. and It's been a fun book. I don't know if you can read any old issue of this one, but you can pick up any old trade and give it a read. And then we've got Department of Truth, issue number 30. Nice colorful cover. 20, uh, number th- 30th, it's not number 30, it's number 16, it's the 30th anniversary up there, that fooled me. Number 16, issue 15, I was a little disappointed in, only in that, it was like, like sort of an experimental, I'm okay with the, with like, this and Ice Cream Man do experimental issues a lot, and sometimes they don't work for me, and I'm okay with that, because when it does work, it's, it's good stuff. There's some crazy colorful artwork. This is all about, um... Trying to keep people from believing in conspiracies too much because if they believe in conspiracies, it rewrites history. There we go. So the Department of Truth, who's the government department tasked with keeping, you know, lids on conspiracies, is uh, run by um, Lee Lee Harvey Oswald. So look at that crazy page. So I've been enjoying this one. Uh, who does, who's doing this one? James Tinian, Allison Sampson. I wonder if that's a guest artist. I don't remember her name. Jordi Belair is the colorist. Uh, Aditya Bidikar is the letterer. Okay. Been enjoying that one. Then we, This is the last one I got, and it's one I just picked up off the shelf, even though it was six bucks. I think this one has to do with Radiant Black. Um, it's called Supermassive. And I picked it up, and I was I looked at it. I wasn't sure if I wanted to spend six bucks on it, uh, like because I don't know if I need an expanded universe from Radiant Black. But what sold me on it was they have gate folds in here. Let's see where are they? There's the picture. There's the gate fold that way. So I was like, you know what? For six bucks, at least I get gate folds. Ah, there's the gatefold that way. Cool. <laughs> so the gatefold sold me on this one. I was like, you know what? That's the little extra. Because I, I also usually don't like square bound comics. The square bound magazine size ones are okay with me because they open up flatter. Square bound comics don't always open up flat. They kind of... But... 
gatefold. All right. All right, let me show you a little bit of my artwork. What did I do this week? I marker colored this one. And it was a little tough. The, the color in this didn't come easy, but uh, I think I got it done in the end. Like I said, some of these, the color just comes easy and some of them it does not. And one of the reasons the color didn't come easy was this face right here is really a big open flat area with just some designs on it. So what did I do? I doubled down on the designs and put even more polka dots in here. So I, I kind of made the, I made flat designs on it. So uh, rather than, because if I were to try to make it round, I'd, I'd kind of, I'd probably fail at it because it's such a flat design to begin with that face. So sometimes emphasizing something, something is not, is not the way to go. You have to emphasize what it is. So I emphasized what it is by putting polka dots on the face and I, I kept darkening them. And there's a little, you get some depth with that little uh, sun behind him. But I think it came out okay. And the other thing I'm working on is another one of my Gatsby ones. This is, this is Jordan Baker from Gatsby. I gotta ink this one now, but th these are the pencils. Um, and I, this is one of those I, 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 I've been trying to figure out what the characters look like. Oh, matter of fact, I also did a, forgot about this. Um, one of my drawings on comics. So this is Jordan Baker without a hat. So that's what I was trying to do. So far, I've gotten Daisy and Jordan Baker to kind of look the way I want them. At least a little bit so far. It takes a while to get their look down. Um... Now I'm going to be working on the dudes of the book, of who there are three at least, and Jordan Baker and Daisy Buchanan are the two women in the book. But uh, got those got those two done, and I'm just going to continue making some Gatsby stuff and see what I can get from it. So there you go. You got some comic books. You got some comic books from eBay. You got some original artwork from Jose Garcia Lopez. You got some original artwork from me. It's a, a, a full-up video this week. You guys have a good week out there.